praise the Lord and God bless you my brothers and sisters uh, this is Reverend Anderson I'm here tonight for the continual continual of this great lesson uh, Paul desire to go to Rome was the first one and then God's wrath against mankind and tonight we want to look or uh, observe the lesson no one is righteous there was a desire for Paul to go to Rome because understand he was an opposer Paul understand many things and so he want as an apostle, apostle to educate the people on the fact because the Jews thought that they were more better off than the Gentiles that they were just the only chosen people and so they thought that they were more righteous than others now Paul went to Rome uh, to let them know that yes it's not so we all need Jesus so if you would stay with me tonight uh, we will just bless the Lord our lesson tonight will be coming from Romans 3 from verse 9 yes through to 20 and the subject lesson brothers and sisters is no one is righteous let us pray precious father I thank you tonight for those who are tuning in yes we thank you for the word of God it's amazing that the word came to instruct us inspire us and guide us so I pray your word will encourage someone tonight who are studying with me in Jesus name amen our team verse we uh, came from 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 it said study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly divide the word of truth we are in war brothers and sisters as sister winder yes is singing the song yes if there's no more time we are in war it's now and we cannot win this battle unless we know the word of god that's why timothy said we should study the word of god that's why paul went to Rome so that he could help the people to understand we all need Jesus and you are not better off because God chose you you understand me he only chose you so that you he would give you his word if you are obedient and let his light shine through you then the rest of the nation and the world will know that there is a God to be served hallelujah praise God yes so uh, stay with me as we go to the word tonight let us go to Romans chapter 3 verse 9 it said what then are we better than they no in no wise for we have before proven both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin as it is written there is none righteous no not one there is none that understandeth paul said there is none that seeketh after god they are all gone out of the way they are together become unprofitable there is none that doeth good no not one so tonight let us observe the lesson you can maybe read for the rest of the the verses from verse 13 through to 20 but as we said you know the the the, the verse roman 3 verse 10 it said as it is written there is none righteous no not one so when we look upon what paul was trying to convey it would be wonderful brothers and sisters if people would only read the holy bible which contain a god inspired word the instruction that came was given to mankind it is important that we read the word of god people will then understand 
we are were all born with a sinful nature and so we would not believe that there is any that is better than the other you know we will know that we are different and so it's important brothers and sisters uh, that we read the word of God because it would change the mindset of people no Romans 3 verse 23 said for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God Romans 5 12 through one man's sin, which was Adam, entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because of sin. Now, because of one man, Christ Jesus, the Son of Man, God's only Son, we can now have righteousness in Jesus Christ so the Bible said that therefore be justified by faith we have peace with God through Christ Jesus so Paul was simply saying to the Jews that there was no one righteous you cannot think you are better than the rest we're living in a world today that these message need to be ringed out. These message need to be conveyed because there are people in elite situation because of race, gender, and color, because of wealth and various things. There are many who thought that they are superior to the rest. But understand that Paul is trying to say that we were all born in sin. We were all uh, created in a sinful nature and we do the same thing as other does some of us we hide and seek some of us dusting in the dark until we come to a light but it only take the the love of God uh, who 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 called Abraham from his country and promised him a new land a new life and from there and going forth then Joseph went into Egypt and God bring out those uh, that were in Egypt that were under the, the bandage of Pharaoh and God has chosen his people and set them apart if they will only trust him obey him and believe in him so uh, even though we are saved because the Lord allow us to accept Jesus Christ and when he revealed himself and even though some people might not yet accept him we cannot believe or go around believe we are better than them pointing up our face our mouth our hand our nose saying look on them because we were all one time doing the same thing we may not do exactly what they were doing but sin is sin there is no different uh, distinction what you think of sin every sin is just sin because if you don't repent then whatever you do a man could be an atheist one could be uh, not an atheist but he's a fornicator one could be not a fornicator but one just don't surrender his life to the Lord one may just be a liar and a thief if we don't accept Jesus Christ my brothers and sisters sin would cause us to enter into a place of torment so Paul was just trying to say let us uh, check ourselves and seek to help somebody the Jews were boasting that they were were better off but this is what Paul said Paul lay out three things uh, to prove to the the, 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 the the people this this statement place was from Corinth and the time was AD 56 when when Paul uh, you know decide to to speak to uh, that generation that generation in such time to let them know I believe in today's world we need some people some believers some anointed ambassador uh, people that are chosen by God to speak to the world today and even we folks in the church sometimes some people believe that they are holier and they are better 
I believe if you think you have been mature and you are having a better relationship, it's time for you to help those who need to come up a little higher and to come into a relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, that's so true. So Paul lay out three things. Listen to what Paul said. All are under sin. That's number one. Romans 3, 9 through 11. Two, the depths of human sin. So you see, there's a depths and we are all under sin. Three, all are accountable to God for our sin. You know, people don't understand. Sometimes we just believe that Jesus died and it's over. Jesus died for the Adamic sin. He died for, him, for the entire sinfulness, you know, what sin caused. But understand, when we come into the knowledge, we have to forget, for uh, repent for the sins that we do. You see, we can just believe it's over because Jesus died on the cross. No, we have to acknowledge our sin. And even when we are believers in Christ, sometimes we did the wrong thing. We, we sin, and that's why the Bible said if we sin, we have an advocate. But remember, we are not sinners because we don't practice sin. We, uh, Paul said, what I, what, I, what I want to do, I do not, and what I don't want to do, that's what I found myself doing. Then he said, oh, wretched uh, man of God, because he began to understand it's not the, the spirit man, but it's the flesh that desires. So that's why we strive, brothers and sisters, to live. That's why we have to stay in the word of God so that we can be able to use the word of God to bring the flesh under subjection. So that when we think we are so much better, we will calm down and, and pray one for another. Because Jesus Christ came, what? Not to call righteous, but sinner to repentance. Amen. Praise God. Do you receive that? Hallelujah. So let's, let us look in, uh, uh, at the aim of the lesson. The aim is to uh, Paul teaching that all of humanity is unrighteous before God. Tell me who can stand before God and say, you are so worthy, you are so holy, you doesn't do anything wrong. That was what uh, the, the, the Jewish and the scribe brought the woman caught in the act of adultery. And they thought that they are so holy following the law that because someone sinned, then you know, that one should be stoned to death. And they, they came challenging Jesus. And the Bible said that Jesus stooped on the ground and he wrote on the ground and he rise up. He said, uh, eat without sin, let him first cast a stone. They were convicted because we all come short of the glory of God. The only person righteous is God. In ourself, we are as filthy raw. But when Jesus Christ died on the cross and we accept him, that his, his blood was the atoning sacrifice that would cleanse us and wash away sins, we claim righteousness in Christ Jesus. So through Jesus Christ, by faith, we claim righteousness. But of ourselves, we are nothing. We just need Jesus. That's what we stand in, the righteousness of God. And that's why Paul said, none, all of us gone astray. You see, but with Jesus Christ, we are righteous in God by faith because of his blood. Uh, to understand that in God's eyes, no one can claim to be righteous. That's what I was just saying. In God's eye, no one because just our thought, just sometimes the way we talk to somebody, just uh, sometimes the way we push up our nose, or just our attitude, sin by omission coming. We don't even understand. That's why we have to keep praying without ceasing according to the word of God. So uh, to be aware of our sinfulness and to give thanks for God's grace through Jesus Christ. So it's because of the grace of God Yes, and the mercies of God, we can stand because many a times we fail, we do something wrong, we, we, we listen to the enemy and disobey God. 
But when we come into the, the beauty, brothers and sisters, is that the word of God is in us. The seed of Christ is in us. So once we are in Christ, in his word, and we found out that something is wrong because our conscience pricked us. And when you have a lively conscience, that would help you to seek the Lord and ask him to forgive you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So here's Paul said, all are under sin. Romans 3, 9 through 11. In the previous section, Paul had outlined the imperious Jewish attitude towards Gentiles, non-Jews. The Jews boast because their knowledge of God and his law. You see, we see that in Romans 2.17. However, Paul was trying to declare to them that it was futile to brag about having God's holy law if they did not live up to it. So you see, that's what, what the Jews were doing. They were just boasting that they were chosen, that God gave them their law. Because remember, in those days, it was only the Jewish uh, nation receive uh, the instruction because God chose them so he could uh, bless them, educate them, allow them to live a life like when Jesus came on earth, he chose the twelve and he, he walked with them, he taught them the way, he teach them uh, the things of God and so when Jesus went back and, and the Holy Spirit came in the day of Pentecost, these men were so well fed with the word of God and with the power of the Holy Ghost, they went everywhere they went, they were just doing good. They were just teaching souls, were saving. Yes, sir. Uh, demons were being uh, cast out of people. People were saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, and being saved. Because what? They were now ambassadors, apostles, teaching the good news of Jesus Christ. That's good news, brothers and sisters. Amen. A Jew who breaks God's law is as guilty or perhaps even more guilty than a Gentiles who break it. Because Jew gain, Jews gain no moral advantage before God, merely because of their ancestry, Paul concluded that both Jews and Gentiles were hopeless, guilty before God. Every human being that is a, that came under the race of Adam race, we are all born in a sinful nature. And that's why we need to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that is blood shed for our sins so that we can receive the blood wash. We can receive a new life and be born again, not of corruptibleness, not of flesh, but of the Spirit, the Word of God, transformed by the Holy Spirit. And so we have a new life so we can live in Christ and do the things that Christ would have us to do. Because without the Word of God living in us, without the Holy Spirit of God empower us, dwell in us, and without you and I as believers obey because we can have the Word of God. That's just like what Paul is saying, that uh, even though they have the Word and the law, they weren't obeying it because they couldn't live the law. That's why one uh, of the scriptures said that the law was weak. Uh, but that's why Jesus Christ came and we are now under grace. So, so we are following uh, the Lord Jesus Christ come on by grace or he saved and that not of yourself through Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So brothers and sisters, Paul said that if we break, everyone is hopeless. The second one is the death of human sin. After declaring that our people are guilty as sinners, Paul described the depth of our guilt. He used vivid image to express the corruption of all humanity. Every human language has words that are vulgar, yeah, and blasphemous lies and evil intention. Uh, uh, our speech, gossip, slanders, and curses are spread by every one of us. No person on earth is free of evil intention. Remember that. Nobody on earth is free of evil intention. 
So when some people put down others because they were bound, trapped by the enemy, it's because we don't understand. Had it not been for the grace and the mercy of God. Some of us believe that it is us. It is just us who do what is right. Had it not been that God help us to catch up on time. Brothers and sisters, we would be doing just like what the others does. Because sometimes some heedless things happen to us by people. And we see people in some various things, the heedless. And sometimes the very thought we think is not right before God. You see, only God's thoughts are so holy because he is our only God. So that's why we have to pray, we have to forgive one another, and we must, we must, brother, never think of ourselves more highlier than we ought. We must humble ourselves and let the Lord exalt us. Yes, and help one another when they are struggling, our brothers and sisters in Christ, those who are, have not yet accept Christ. These are our brothers and sisters who, who know if they are not, who, who tomorrow will accept Christ. So our duty is to go out there and help them. If they are struggling, our duty is to bring them, is to be patient, have passion, have mercy, empathy, and try to win them over because the enemy intention is to destroy them. But Jesus Christ came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Are you thinking that you're better off than somebody? If that was your mindset, ask God, brothers and sisters watching me, and to forgive you. Uh, or if you don't understand, get in the Word. Because the Word of God is like a mirror. You stand before the glass and you look on yourself. And you see wrinkle and you see all the things that need to be changed and then you could ask God to help you that's what the word does the word show us ourselves, God's word and sometimes when we think we are so good that we are in such a right standard then we found out we said no remember I think it was Isaiah the Bible said when you are you Zion die Isaiah sought the Lord you know and then when he found out he said when he when God revealed him he said, he said woe is me because I'm a man that is undone and of unclean lips you see sometimes what many times brothers and sisters all we need is the word of God to reveal itself in, in such a magnitude in is is God's to a light shine upon us and then we begin to cry out and say Lord have mercy on me Yes, because I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But because we are in Christ Jesus, we can claim righteousness. You see, understand what Paul was saying. He was a saying uh, that nobody, you know, is better than nobody. Nobody righteous, just in the eyes of God. We are all sin. We only can claim righteousness by faith in Jesus Christ. But as we travel, that's why we, we work our salvation. That, that, that's why we, we continue to pray. Because if we were all uh, settled, we wouldn't have to have Bible study. We wouldn't have to be going to church from the day we accept Christ. That's over. But there is other people and we have to continue to strive for perfection in Christ Jesus. Mean uh, drop off as we go along. The word of God will help us. And we will drop off. So there is a depth of human sin, brother. The depth is from our uh, poor parents, Adam. It's a nature. Uh, we grow, we were born in sin, and we have to be transformed. Our mind has to be transformed by the renewing, by the word of God. We, we got to receive the Holy Spirit. The word of God got to dwell in us richly so our thought become holy. Our mind, the things we think, the things we say, we want the word of God to direct us. And that's it. Take a born again, a new life. That's what Jesus said unto Nicodemus. You must be born again. Nicodemus said, but Lord, how can this thing be? Jesus said, you have to be born of the water, the spirit, and the blood. Because Nicodemus thought that it is impossible to enter into his mother's home. Jesus talking about to accept the fact Jesus Christ is Lord. That he died for your sin. To confess your sin. And let the Holy Spirit repent. And let the Holy Spirit come in. And give you that seal. And wash you makes you clean and prepare you for the journey 
The journey is to tell somebody who is down that you are there for them, that Christ came to give them life. Yes, brothers and sisters, every human language, no person on earth is free of evil intention or action. While some uh, really just boast of low crime or lower crime rate, we are living in fear of the evil potential of those around us. So even though when we are in Christ, brothers and sisters, sometimes we hear some things happen and we speak word that we shouldn't even speak because sometimes our spirit get angry. We sometimes caught off God, uh, wave away from uh, the process and we, we have to go back to the Lord and say forgive us because none of us understand why people do things. None of us know only God of a deep understanding of the thought, mind and the action and the things that cause people to do what they are doing. Our desire is to pray for them. We should just pray that God will change them because they are they have sin that ruled their life and they need Jesus to come in. All are accountable to God. We have to give an account. So Romans 3, 19 through 20, it says that since they possessed God's law, the Jews were especially accountable to him. We are accountable for breaking it. The Gentiles possess no such uh, divinely given code. Therefore, consequence, however, were enough to make them aware of God's standard of righteousness and wrong. Otherwise, the intuition of God in us. From the beginning you were created, God creates you. There is an instinct to know right from wrong as you grew. Knowledge grow as you grow. Remember uh, the Bible said that knowledge is an increase. It's not only meaning technology and all. It means in the wisdom, in the mind of man. God has placed something within you. His word, in himself, that means you want to know God. When you do something wrong, you will know. So that's why we have to start love one another and don't be... Uh, what you got angry with one another, uh, but realize that had it not been for Christ. The Jews sinned by violating God's revel revealed law. The Gentiles sinned by violating their God-given conscience. So there were just two, but that it was before Jesus Christ came. Let me clear classify that. But now we are all guilty because we, the whole world has been given the, 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 the message it may not reach it because the Bible said this, this gospel of the kingdom must be preaching to all the world. So maybe, maybe some people may not have heard the word, but the, it is going forth. That's why we have technology uh, and all these technology and missionaries and all these things. People is hearing the word of God somehow, brothers and sister, both were accountable to God for their sins. In the American legal system, there are several levels of court. If a person is dissatisfied with a ruling in a lower court, he or she can appeal to an higher court. But once a judgment is handed down in the Supreme Court, the ruling is final. There no longer remain any appeal. Likewise, there is no higher judge than God. The entire world stands guilty before his verdict. We are all accountable before God. So brothers and sisters, I think it is time for us to begin to humble ourselves. Ask God to forgive us for our sins. If you are not saved, ask God to forgive you. Let us stop criticizing and backbite one another and believe we are better off because we are in a better position. But we, without the mercies of God, will be doing. Sometimes I look back over my life and some of the things that I did. And, and I know they were wrong now. And when you're conscious, I say, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Because I don't know where I would be had it not been for the grace of God. Where would you be had it not been for the grace of God? Let us take an inventory of ourselves and the word of God. And see that we all need Jesus. People that are out there need to be saved before it is too late. Are you ready to go out there and tell somebody, I forgive you. You know, God forgive you. Accept him. Call upon him. Turn from your evil ways. Repent. Ask him to forgive you. There are many in the prison. Many, Lord my God, they are facing so much stuff. Some are so guilty. Some are so, what you would call it, but it's because of sin. 
Sin is, is what caused man. The, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. My brothers and sisters, God bless you. I hope that this few words will encourage you as we go about our daily life. Let us not think of ourselves more highly than others, but just thank God that His righteousness is by which we stand. By faith are we saved through Christ Jesus. And had it not been for Him dying for us, then we all would have no hope. But you can have hope tonight. And claim the righteousness of God if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. God bless you. See you next week. And you just have a blessed day. Reverend Anderson coming to you from Danbury, Connecticut. God bless you.